There are many descriptions and illustrations of the research process available. This model research process is adapted from William Badke's book, Research Strategies, Finding Your Way Through the Information Fog. Please note, as Badke does, that this research process applies to a specific kind of research. Informational research, such as we find in the humanities, or literature reviews in social sciences and sciences. It's not research design or hypothesis testing, such as you find in pure and applied science experiments. It's not ethnographic research or that involving human subjects, such as you find in social sciences and education. While it is similar, this kind of research is not the same as business case analysis. With that in mind, the model research process is a process with the following steps or components. We have an idea for a topic. We do some preliminary initial research. This leads us to formulate a research question. We gather information from a variety of different sources and combine those different pieces of information. We evaluate the information and analyze it in light of our research question. From this, we create new information. In university, this is often known as writing the paper. And we draw conclusions or make recommendations. This leads us to a new topic or a new aspect of the topic and the cycle begins again. Scholars repeat this cycle, refining their research about a topic over a long academic career. But the research process isn't quite so clean or clear or straightforward. It's not step by step, and you tend to move back and forth around the circle, around the process as you complete your research. There's the research process again on the slide. We have an idea for a topic. We do initial research, what Badke calls gaining working knowledge of a topic. This includes our background knowledge, what we already know or think we know about the topic. We do some basic reading and general information sources to get a better understanding of our topic. And as a result, we learn some terminology, words and their meanings about this topic. For example, the terminology of business is very different from the terminology of English. Badke defines working knowledge of a topic as the moment when you can talk about it for one minute without repeating yourself. This working knowledge leads us to formulate a research question. Research isn't really research until you're using it to solve a problem or answer a question. Then we gather information from a variety of different sources. We use our knowledge of the search tools to find data from books, articles, websites, reports, and more. We start to combine those different pieces of information into new insights. And it's really important that we manage our results so we can revisit the information that we found along the way. A really helpful way to do this is through a research log. And we show you an example of that in this course. We evaluate the information and we analyze it in light of our research question. What kind of information do I need? Primary sources? Secondary sources? What about oral traditions and other diverse information sources? Is the information of sufficient quality and of the correct nature for this research? To determine this, we use evaluation criteria which we discuss elsewhere in this section of the course. Once I've found the quality information and the kind of information that I need, I need to ask myself, how does it help answer or illustrate the research question? Do I need to revise my approach or alter my research question based on my new findings? 
How will I incorporate differing opinions into my research? From this, we create new information. We are now authors. We are now creators. Again, in university, this can be known as writing the paper. I remember to provide an introduction which describes the research problem to my reader, who may not have the same background knowledge of my topic. I acknowledge those who have studied this topic before. Academic integrity means that I cite the other authors I've quoted or paraphrased, and I comp provide complete references so my reader can go explore their work on their own. I build my paper in an organized way to help my reader follow my arguments logically. And I draw conclusions or make recommendations. I am now a creator of new information in this field. Others will read my work and respond to it, and the research process begins again. Scholars repeat this cycle, refining their research about a topic and conversing with other scholars in their field over a long academic career. And this can be what it feels like. This is a tangled web, a scribbled line, a ball of string, and this is what Badke calls the information fog. Research isn't a simple circular or linear process. It can definitely get messy. New findings alter our approach and make us question our research topic, question our research question, question our thesis. Try not to let it overwhelm you. Take charge. Develop a question that interests you. You will spend time on it. Try to find something you care about, but not so much that you can't ever change your position. Plan your time and your research strategy. Get to know the search tools and how they work, such as library databases, such as Google Scholar, such as the library catalog. Review our lessons about all of these from week two. Take good notes about your findings. A research log is an excellent way, and we give you practice with that in this course. Embrace lateral thinking. An open mind enables you to incorporate new ideas and to try new things if your original research question doesn't go the way you'd hoped. An open mind also enables you to change your position. A poor research project is one that simply confirms your pre-existing opinions. This is called bias and can be the downfall of a paper or a thesis. Keep a critical stance. Evaluate information to make sure it is of high quality and is relevant to your research question. Organize your writing. There are lots of resources to help you organize your writing. The Writing Center and Learning Strategist at the Mount have websites to help. There are lots of books, articles, and websites. You can consult with other people who you know to be good writers. You may have a writing tutor. Organizing your writing helps you communicate with your readers so they understand both your research question and the main issues that you've explored and can therefore learn from your conclusions. And always, of course, acknowledge the researchers whose work you are using to make your case. This is the core principle of academic integrity. Lastly, seek help. If you're unsure about something, ask questions, talk to your professor, get clarification, know what the requirements are, and then you'll be able to meet them. And remember that the library is here for you. We are available to help in person and at a distance, so be sure to reach out to us. Thank you. Have a great day.